setting right here with the one and only Elise Chacon. Yeah. Rounds of applause. Hey guys. Yeah. It took <laughs> us a little bit to finally get this sit down, but yes. finally here. So give us a little insight about yourself. Like, yeah. what do you do? Where do you stay? Like city wise? Okay. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. I'm really excited I to be here. I appreciate you. Um, so I'm 25 years old. Um, I am a personal trainer at CrossFit West Covina. Um, I love what I do, so that's like the most exciting part. Nice. Um, uh, what important. else? <laughs> I am. I'm staying in Hacienda Heights. Shout out to the six two six. You know, I'm a big supporter. That's right, six two six. Yes, sir. Um, and yeah, I mean, I just have so much to share with you. So I'm ready to just get started. Let, let's right. see what we Is got. there a topic you want to get right into? Um, no, whatever you have. No? Yeah. All right. How we, how did you get into this career, this big industry that, man, everybody and everybody is a trainer. Right. First and foremost. Super like, saturated. Yeah. So how did you get into it? What made you stay in this and how successful has it been for you? Yeah. So, you know, it really, I think how a lot of people start is life changing experiences. Yeah. And that's kind of something that happened to me. Um, you know, I was in a relationship that was not the healthiest and I was with, you know, um, somebody who I just don't feel like was the right person for me. Um, and I was going, I, and I felt like I was going down a downward spiral. Um, and I had been 200 pounds. I was, you know, I gr just graduated from like college and I was like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing, but like, I, I'm not happy. Like yeah. I literally sat with that and I was like, I'm not happy. Like things were going on in our relationship and the dynamic just what is, wasn't right. And yeah. I was like, you know what? Like, I'm not happy. I need to move on, you know? And we both made that decision to do that. Um, and ever since then, I haven't looked back on my, like, self-evolution, like, and that, like, growth process of just evolving every day. Um, so I started off with what I knew, which was, you know, fitness, because I was an athlete all my life. Well, I what had, sports did you play? Um, I started off with softball, so I played that for eight years. Okay. Then I jumped into volleyball, and then I played that collegiately at Fullerton College. Um, I did beach, and then I did just regular, like, Jeez. gym volleyball. Yeah, so that was, like, all my life I've just been very fit. And so yeah. when I was in that relationship or within those couple of years, I did not feel like myself because for so long I had been, you know, working out and, right. like, staying healthy. And so it was a big, like, adjustment for me to just be in that position. Yeah. Um, so ever since, like, I made that decision, um, I never looked back. And, you know, I ended up losing, like, 80 pounds. And so ever Damn. since that, like, I was like, you know what? I'm so – I've been changed by this experience, and I want to help other women do the same thing. So and what – What? Uh, sorry to cut you off, but I think that's so important because you said six years – you were in a down world spiral. What did it take for you to get out of that, that cycle, that at over and over believing the lies that I am going to change, things are going to change, and yeah. like what made you just say, "All right, this is it. This is where I'm. I'm going to change." Yeah, I think there was just a lot of really difficult situations that me and my partner at the time had and were going through. I think things yeah. that I just couldn't come back from, mm. and I think when you know. And I had a best friend at the time, and we ended up falling out because of other things. And so I just felt like everything was crumbling. Yeah. And, like, we had, like, I felt like because of those indifferences that we had and this, the trust that just wasn't there anymore, mm. I was devastated. You know, I had a daughter with my this person. Like, I 
what thought this person was everything to me, you know, yeah. and when that just doesn't work out, like that was the moment where I was like, well, then who's going to take care of me? Like at that point, it was like a teamwork type yeah. of thing. And I was like, yo, like who's got me? Right. Like I was looking around and I was like crying, devastated, like in my room. And Who I was had like, you? at the end of the day, I had to get myself up out yes. of bed, you know, like yes. at the end of the day, like I had to wake up every day and I was like five, four, three, two, one. And that's how I was able to get the fuck up. Like, um, this one person, um, her name's Mel Robbins and she talks about the five second rule and she mm. taps in on how, when she was in this depressive state, she counted for five seconds, like yeah. five, four, three, two, one backwards. And psychologically that like helps you focus in on whatever task you're trying to do. Shit. So I was like, okay, look, I need to five, four, three, two, one this shit right now <laughs> and get <laughs> my ass out of bed. I need to do and, this. Yeah. And do it. And yeah. so I think for me, that was just something that I need to do. I mean, I had a daughter that I had to like take care of you know yeah. and you know as much as I hated at the time to just even move through my day like mm. I knew it needed to be done and so I think for me it was like all right like no one's gonna save me like I realize that now like this person who I thought was gonna have my back or like have each other like you know is it's not working out. So like, yeah. what do I need to do? And that's kind of when I went MIA on social media. You know, you do the whole like, the I'm reset, out type of the thing, reset, the reset button. Yeah. Exactly. And you're just like, okay, I got to like take a moment for myself. Um, and I just remember like the last post that I had posted way back then, I was like super heavy, you know, just like drinking all the time and stuff like that. And then yeah. when I had come back on social media, I was like 80 pounds down. I had like, you know, no fat on me. And people were just like, what the <laughs> hell happened to you? Like, what is going on right now? Everybody that that wasn't there was there exactly and i mean i lost a lot of people along the way like of being in that like downward spiral that, yeah that happens and and we've had the, this conversation with like the people here that uh when you are in a downward spiral a lot of people don't understand that mm -hmm. people think that hey like you eh, just get out of it you're good don't worry about it yeah but it's like it really affects you it gets you out of certain things that you've been doing for a while you get out of like your friends. You don't yes. want to be around them. Yeah. And it and it goes to that famous phrase like you changed. Mm -hmm. And then oh, when you yeah. come back and you're better and you're doing better, they're just like, either who are you? yeah, who are you? <laughs> either they support you and they ride with you, yeah. or they just like talk smack about you. They talk Definitely. shit about you. Yeah. But it, my thing, and someone told me to ask you like, after having your kid, that a uh, postpartum. Mm, you know yeah. i think that's very important obviously yes. me being a dad yep. um having knowing other people that are parents and mothers they talk about it but no one really talks about right that. no definitely postpartum is something that i think a lot of women should take more seriously and i definitely had my episodes of that and on top of that birth control on top of postpartum is something that we need to talk about too. Like, <laughs> talk because about it. I, um, I wasn't on birth control, obviously before I had my daughter. <laughs> so I had to be on it. My mom even came with me. She was like, girl, you were, I'm making sure this, like I had the next plan on, I think at the time. And so my mom was like, I'm making sure this thing is in your arm. Like, so there was no more accidents. And so I was like, all right, all right. Um, so at the time I had gone it, I think three weeks after I had had my daughter, yeah. um, or like about a month. And I was like, Okay, so I was dealing with postpartum, and then I was dealing with all the emotional, like, I, whatever the hell they put in you for the birth control. So yeah. my mind was going gnarly. Like, it was just on one. And then on top of that, I didn't like the way I looked because I was, you know, way over. I was, like, two, like 190 at the time, like, after I had my daughter, like, you know. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, my God, like, this is not for me. Like, I hated the way I looked. I hated the way I felt. You got like, up to 200 because you were pregnant? Yeah, then so it was like 180, uh, you know, you lose. But that's, yeah. But it was like it's it's still But self, like self, like you yourself yeah. didn't like it. Right. You like you knew how you said you yeah. were in sports, you played at this yes. level, you knew the shape you were in. Right. To literally this happening. Yes. It's confidence is very man, a lot of people we we miss that sometimes. Yeah. And even mm -hmm. I mean meeting you for the first time like Yeah. You seem really happy. Mm -hmm. What, in what parts have you felt like the lowest besides the relationship? Like, did you suffer? I think after, like, uh, the, the relationship that I was in after, or not even a relationship, but, like, dating after mm. my daughter. I feel like, you know, uh, a lot of men, they don't really 
Talk about it. Talk about it. Like, they don't really, like, support, or not support, I should say, but they really do judge you for being a mom, I think, in my opinion. I think, like, you know, I had some low points in my self-esteem, you know, like, dealing with the postpartum and and just kind of, like, okay, like, you know what? Like, I ended up getting off that birth control, and then I felt a lot better, and then the relationship ended, so that's how I was able to move forward. But I feel like another low point is just dating and getting like people saying like, Oh, you know, you haven't had enough life experience. Like I've gotten that before. Like, you know, you haven't had, I'm like, just cause I haven't traveled the world yes. and gone to a million countries or like, you know, been outside of my hometown, like does not mean I don't value myself and all of the shit that I went through. Yeah. Like, I feel like ha- being in a six year relationship, having a daughter struggling from the bottom, like that's experience right there. That is. And but that's, I'm ex- not, yeah. that's experience that a lot of people, yeah. Won't understand. Yeah. And I think it is a blessing because I've gone through something like that. One of my good friends, he he's a, he's a young parent too. Yeah. And it's just that learning, learning. And one of uh, my good friends, Ashley, she even said it. Like, there's a lot of people that, unfortunately, they are parents because they don't know how to value. Yes. Having being a parent because mm-hmm. those people that don't get to have kids mm-hmm. or lose a child along the way. Yeah. It's like we actually have someone we have someone to look up to us yes. that's going to count on us right and literally like the last couple of weeks i was it was more of a i need to take care of me mm-hmm. if i don't yes. take care of me i can't take care of him absolutely i mean i think in just being a young parent in general like you're trying to figure out yourself yeah. and let alone helping someone else figure out themselves along the way yeah and that's to, for me been the hardest part of like damn like i'm lost like i'm straight up lost right now you know like yeah. and i'm still figuring it out and like i still have to show up for her every single day and make sure she's good you yeah. know so it's like when she's with her dad 50 percent of the time like i'm able to figure out myself yeah. and sometimes i do feel rushed to do that but then there's other days where i'm like you know what like just stay in the moment like take take everything for what it is and like enjoy the process. But there are moments when she's, I, I see her just getting older and like, you know, being a little sassy and like doing the things that yeah. like, and I'm just like, Oh my gosh, like I got to really like, you know, I, I don't know. It, it's a lot as just being a young parent in general. And then, so being a parent, a woman, strong woman and in your own business, mm-hmm. how do you survive? How, how, how do you maintain a balance? Like what are key points that you would, you know, suggest yeah. to other people. I definitely say, de- like, especially for if you are able to dedicate like a day to yourself. For like, for me, it's Sundays. Like, I do whatever I want on Sundays. I have a really good routine, so I get up, I meditate, I like go to the gym. Like, so before I got here, I went to the gym. I drink my Celsius, gets me up. Like, whatever makes me happy. Like, yeah. I- I'll do those things in the morning before I have to do anything else. Yeah. Um, but specifically on Sundays, I make sure that I get all my errands done. Like, I get my nails, I get my, you know, whatever it is. Is, like I take care of me like yeah. and that's something like I get my car washed like everything is taken like on Sunday and it helps me restart from Monday because I get her back on Wednesday yeah. and then Monday Tuesday I'm working all day so I don't really get to tap into myself very much but I'll even take myself to lunch like you know I'll just you, do the you things you can eat alone I can eat alone yeah I actually like yes. it I find that like you know and I'm very spiritual too so I find that like if somebody comes up to me and talks to me like I'm gonna make really good conversation by myself like yeah. I, I don't know I like like just tapping. I don't know. I'm, they said the, the some of the smartest people talk to themselves the most. I feel like I'm, I might not be the smartest, but I definitely talk to myself nah, a lot. I, I think we are smart, like everybody, yeah. in our own way, because the events that we have to go through. Absolutely. And I, I feel like us, you included, like we're not naive to like put that to the side and do the same thing over and over, hoping for a different yes. outcome. Absolutely. And it's like, no, we got to learn. Yep. And with now, every lesson is learning opportunity. People yeah. got to count on us. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. so it's um, it's different. So now with you, what's up? You're like, I see you have a sort of a following. You have a pretty good support system yes. following. You were earlier talking about your team. Yes. Let's talk about that. Yeah. How do, you, how do you build a team trustworthy that they got your back, support, positivity? How, do, how does that come yeah. about? Um, I think showing up for yourself and authentically, like every day. For me, it was like, for the longest time, I didn't show up for myself authentically. I was like forming a facade, like that I was trying to impress people for the longest time or be somebody who I wasn't. And when I hit my downward spiral, I said like, you know, it took a long time, but you know, I was like, I'm gonna, I vowed to myself, I'm gonna show up as my authentic self each and every day. And whoever's gonna gravitate towards that is gonna like fuck with that. And whoever is not is gonna dip. And so 
I've created like, well, my parents have always been there. They support me. That this is the reason why I'm even able to do the things that I'm able to do. <laughs> so they're a part of my team no matter what. Yeah. Um, and just my friends. Like I only, I could count all the, f like my best friends on like two hands, you know, yeah. like the top 10. And even my clients have become my community and my support system. So dope. Um, and so I think like just being in, you know, and showing up as my authentic self, I think that has really helped build the team that I have. And I mean, I, I can rely on them, you know, and I think like from the past, I didn't have that, like, because mm. I was sh showing up unorganically, yeah. like I was getting people who were also the unorganic themselves yeah. and they you weren't showing up for me in ways that I needed. And I'm able to like talk to my friends and, and have vulnerable conversations and connect yeah. with them on a deeper level that I wasn't able to do before. And so I think just being so true to who I am has gravitated those people towards me. And so I feel like super blessed and, and just so thankful that like they've even had that, like I've yeah. even had the opportunity to like have friends in a community like where that. Your, uh, where are your parents from? Um, so my mom's from, my mom's side is from Matamoros, Mexico. And then my dad is from like, I think the borderline of Texas. So mm. I'm not really sure. I mean, I know he's like more Spain, like he's light. So he's like, sp are you like a Dallas sp fan? I'm not. No. <laughs> Podcast over. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I'm, you know, I don't really follow too much on sports at the moment. Cause uh, I just been really like, busy. do you have a favorite sport? Um, besides volleyball, okay. Right, right, right. Besides okay. Volleyball. Um, I would say I really like basketball or football. Like okay. I'll tap into that. Like the Rams. I'm a big supporter. Just LA. Whoever's in LA at the time, like <laughs> who knows? Like who's yeah. coming through these days? But yeah. All right. So uh, earlier this week, and I put out that people asked some questions. Someone said, "How do you protect your peace of mind?" Oh yeah, I'm super big on that. So one thing that you do is eliminate the people who are not for you. Um, mm. And I think like for me, um, how I protect my peace is like as if I even come across somebody who's like chaotic or like I, I see chaotic behavior patterns, yeah. I completely remove myself from that situation or that mm. person. And yes. I definitely won't be hanging out with them again. Or, you know, I, I'll just see things like if somebody's talking to me about their friend and they're like bad mouthing their friend, like just that in itself. I'm like, OK, well, I'm not ever telling you anything <laughs> like for first off yeah and also i'm just not gonna like uh entertain this idea Do and also i don't let things like if something happens to me i don't let it like sit with i don't sit with that for a long time unless it's like super detrimental to me yeah like if something happens to me or like something chaotic kind of happens or somebody disturbs my peace i just brush it off and then i'll never speak on that do again you, do you think uh the peace of mind kind of relates also to like your sanity Yes. How to keep your sanity involved. Yeah, well, you know I, mean, I mean, they always say, like, you know, we're in our heads so much, you might as well make it a beautiful place to be. Mm. And I, f I find that to be so Damn, true. Yes. Like, I yes. am in my head all the time. I'm the biggest overthinker. Like, if you know <laughs> me, I'm always thinking of something or just, yeah. like, talking about something or the universe, you know. And so I just try to make it a beautiful place and beautiful thoughts and, like, you know, just attract. Like, energy is, like, our words are energy and, like, yeah. they're currency in some ways, you know. So I try to make sure that everything that I'm putting out, I want to get back. Because if yeah. I'm putting out that negativity or I'm putting out chaos, that's exactly what I'm going to receive. So yeah. I just try to make sure that, like, you know, that my head is right. Because if it ain't, <laughs> not, like, I could just feel it. Sometimes when your thoughts are bad, like, and your negativity. Everything goes bad. Everything starts everything to, like, goes bad. You, you stub your toe. Then you start screaming. And then you're like, oh, my yeah. throat hurts. You know? And you, you're just, like, like, it's like one thing after another. You feel like one chain of event leads to the rest. And you're yeah. just like, fuck, I just have a horrible day. Yeah. And it's but if you just let it, if you stub your yes. toe, right? And yeah. you're just like, no worries. Like, toe, you good? All shit right, happens. Cool. Yeah, shit, shit happens. happens. Shake it off. Yeah. And like, oh, and then you think about, oh, I'm going to go get um, some a smoothie today or whatever. Like, to just treat myself because it's seven. So I don't know, whatever, <laughs> right? Like, you're making things better. And, yeah. like, you're not, like, simmering on that, like, thought or yeah. negative thought. Yeah. So right now that we are in our holiday season, you know, joyful season. Yes. Um, unfortunately, it is... A, from what I've seen, a very depressional season. Yeah. And a lot of people are struggling. And it's it's so crazy because I post, one of the questions that were in in that uh, questionnaire was, um, how do you deal with death? And I put that video out, obviously. And it got a lot of love. I'm like, man, like a lot of people needed to hear this. Yeah. And it was just me on my perspective. And it was so random because I put it out, I believe like eight in the morning. I was at work. And then I got to one of my last jobs. And in my, in my job line, I interact with a lot of people, yeah. especially like just warehouse workers and stuff like that. And one of them randomly, I see her once a month, only once a month. 
And it's just, hey, how are you? Have a great day. Have a great month. Blah, blah, blah. Left. And when this time she came, she came around, she's like, hey, how are you? I was like, well, I'm good. You know, I'm finally, I'm, I'm doing good, working, yeah. you know, what else in Spanish? <laughs> I was like, que mas tengo? Yeah. And I was like, how are you? Como estas? She was like, I'm not good. Yeah. I'm, and it just, it already started clicking. And I was like, yeah. por qué? And she was like, I just had to bury my daughter <gasps> three months ago because yeah. of COVID. Wow. I was like, wow. Yeah. So we literally had about a 10-minute conversation. Yeah. She opened up about depression. She yeah. opened up about her other kids and yeah. how she didn't want to get out of bed, how she didn't want to do this or that. Yeah. And I was like, look, unfortunately, I just lost my best friend one month ago. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm the same way. Because yep. two weeks ago, we, we went out on a trip. And that week prior, I did not want to get, I did not want to go. Yeah. I put up a fight. I said, I'm not going. I'm not doing anything. Yeah. And just on like Monday, no, was it on Friday? Friday. I, obviously, after the whole day, I told my mom, I was like, if I would have stayed, it would have been a lot worse. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I was depressed, super depressed. Yeah. And I was like, and it's so crazy because I put this message out. And this lady, I have no connection wow. with, no history with, yeah. nothing. She opened up. And the message I had to her was, you need to keep going. Yep. Mm-hmm. You need to live for, your, for your, your daughter. You have other kids. They depend on you. Yeah. You know, as, as a mom, yeah. we look at our moms and, and we, you yeah. are our rock. Absolutely. You are our rock. And yes. it was just, wow. with that being said, like, seasons like this holiday season like is that important with you and your family um you know we don't have a huge family um and I think that since I've basically got a divorce I felt like you know and like (laughs) my whole life has like completely changed the holidays are hard for me too and I think you know to that to your point I I didn't lose anybody but I definitely felt like there was a death happening yet like a relationship had ended like a partnership had completely different type yeah Yeah. it was a different type of death for me yeah um and it was like it, it was still the same it felt the same it felt like I had literally like he had died you know that's really truly how I felt and I think to that point you know the holidays are very hard for me um and I was talking to my therapist about this too is like you Mm. know it's it's hard for me um to get up sometimes like I'm I'm not lonely because I have myself and I I know that I'm solid inside yeah but sometimes it's hard when I don't have a partner and when I don't have anybody to kind of rely on and then I remind I remind myself about my community and my team that I have behind me right but yeah. at some point in time, like, it comes to a point where you're just like, okay, but I do want somebody to, to share those moments with. Yeah. And that's hard, you know? But I think, like, you know, just, like, to your point, you got to just kind of keep going um, and show up for yourself. And once you show up for yourself, you'll show up for others. Yeah, literally, uh, yesterday, we're out, uh, bef- when I messaged you, we're out uh, going, buying lights for the house and yeah. stuff like that. And then I put on... Many Men by 50 Cent, and it's... Good song. A great song. <laughs> very great song. If yeah. you haven't heard it, man, you're messing out. No, yeah. But in one of the phrases, in one of his uh, lines, he says, death must be easy because life is hard. Mentally and emotionally, it's like... Man. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, no. And that was like, bro, I listened... hard on that. <laughs> I was like, I've listened to this song millions of times. Right. And listening to that small little piece right there, right. it's like, man, that's the truth. Yes. Because we are, like, sadly, there is there is all that type of um, of death, suicide, unfortunately, in yes. a lot of the young young generation. Yeah. Um, you, f- you don't feel at ease. Like, mm-hmm. you know, with, with me, it was uh, my best friend. And yeah. He, uh, we missed out. Yeah. And one blames himself so much because you're just like, mm-hmm. where did I miss? Yeah. Where did I fail? Definitely. We all did. We all failed. Mm-hmm. We felt like that. But someone told me whether you were there or not, it was going to happen. For sure. Absolutely. And it's like, how do you live now? Mm-hmm. So it it was a re- not a reality check, but it was one of those things where it's like, all right, I got to reset. Yeah. I got to yeah. reset because this is something that, that is ongoing, especially the young generation. And putting that, again, putting that video got me more in my eyes. Like, yeah. man, the messages that we got to get out, mm-hmm. this is where it's at. Yeah, and, and I think, yeah, to that point, you know, losing your best friend, that's, that's like, 
on another level. You know, I can only imagine like, you know, if I lost my best friend, oh my God, like you call them every day or you like talk often, you know, and you don't have that person who you were bouncing ideas off of or being creative with or going on vacations. And, you know, and as you have kids, I'm sure they were like in their lives and stuff. And I think you just, I, I'm not sure like how you're coping with it, but something that like, I know I've had friends who've had the same issue and something that I just tell them is that, you know, you have to take what they've given you, whatever they've given you so far, like whatever lessons they've taught you, like it's yours to keep and yours to share with others and like their impact that they had on you, you know, I think like that's important to like keep their like, you know, their marathon living like Nipsey, you know, (laughs) like it's kind of like, it's just one of those things that you have to like keep their name, like living on, like what did they stand for? Like, how did they change your life? And then how can, you know, you change someone else's by what they've taught you, you know, because at the end of the day, like that was your, like, that was your boy. Like that was, you know, something that 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 you, yeah. Brother from another month, you know? So so. it's like, I, I tell anybody and it's like, you need that, those type of friends that, no matter what you do in life, they support you. Yep. They bring they no matter what change you have, they're there with you. They support you. They love you. And that's why I'm a very big person on, on hugs and saying I love you. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, unfortunately a lot of people when situations like that happen, we a lot of people have that regret. Oh man, I should have done this. I should have told them this, this, this. Definitely. And I'm very, I could say, lucky that. I don't have that missing part because every single time it was like, I do, I love you, bro. Here's a hug. Yeah. Guys hugging, boom, I love you big, bro. Yeah, but that's it, awesome. But it was just that, you know, setting, yeah. still setting in. It was just that because I was going, still working, going to practice. I'm crying. Yeah. I was just no, like, sure. got to work. I got to yeah. keep going. Yeah. So that lady reminded me of that same mm-hmm. thing. She's like, I had to get up. I had to yeah. go work. I'm like, and I think too, like. Uh, just to tap in on that like spiritually I feel like they're always around you Mm, know and so I think like that's not on another episode but like I'm very spiritual in that sense of like you can talk to them anytime and I think that we all they're always are sending you signs whether that be through like a penny on the floor or like butterflies in the sky like there's certain things that like spirits will do to like make sure like hey, like, I'm here, like, I got your back, or, like, maybe you'll even see a shadow, or, like, you'll hear something, or you'll feel somebody, like, touching your shoulder, right? Like, they're always around, they're always listening, and they're guiding you, you know, throughout your life. Yeah, like, the reason, like, I I wanted to bring this up, especially on this one, because it's obviously the the one we're going to put out soon, Um, because of this this season, just because of what's happening in this world, the generation that is looking for answers, Mm -hmm. um, you know, going through it and it's on the outside in is just like, look, bro, like you can't always be there. You, yeah. you can only be there for for them as much as you can. And you do get mad sometimes. Mm-hmm. This, and I heard it in another one and and what he said and it got me mad. I'm just like, you were there for everybody. Mm. You were there for everybody. Everybody ne- needed something. You were there. Yeah. And this one time you weren't there for yourself. Yeah. You didn't have Damn. you. I got I was chills. Like, I got the chills. I was yeah. like, yeah, like, fuck, man. Like, yeah, you were right. Like, you were there for everybody. You made everybody laugh. You loved everybody. You were this, that. And the one time mm-hmm. you needed you. Yeah. I was like, fuck, man. Yeah. And I think that it's just like so important that I think teaching our youth early on, like as you have kids and I have kids like that, you got to love yourself first, like no matter what, like when you're. I, I don't know, like for me, I don't, I don't think I got taught that early on and I was seeking that from men or like relationships mm. or other people or validation because I wasn't receiving an emotional support that I needed at the time growing up. Yeah. And so for me, it was readjusting those thought, that thought process of like, okay, I need to like rewire what I was taught and what I was told and what I was, how I was raised yeah. and be like, okay, I need to start showing up for me, loving myself because no one else is going to do that. But when you don't do the work and when you're not putting in the growth, like the effort to grow, like, you know, oftentimes, unfortunately, our thoughts get the best of us. And, you know, I'm guilty of having those thoughts before, you know, in the past. And when you're in those downward spirals, you're like, yo, how much more can I take? You know, like how many more of these can I go through? Um, But I think to that point of just staying on top and being on your toes and being like, you know, I'm not going to let this get the best of me. I'm going to do the work that I need to do, get to a better place and then keep pushing forward. I think for me, that was the only thing that helped me get over those thoughts and get over like the, the depression that I was carrying for such a long time. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was hard. Yeah. It's hard, but yeah, it's, it's like I say, like it's hard, but it's not impossible. And when you build your team and you you show up authentically, like those are all the key factors to like yeah. you know evolving and being a better you. And once you do that, you know people are gonna gravitate towards that and fuck with you, you know. So yeah. <laughs> there we go. Switching it, you know, okay. a little bit more positive. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. training. Yes. How is your training? How like how do you treat your clients? What kind yeah. of training do you do for? Like, so yeah, I I'm basically like I do a uh, training like hit workouts and then I do obviously weight training. So I my whole objective is creating a more feminine physique. So we build our glutes and we build our back to create more of a snatcher look. Um, and you know, speaking on my clients, like I love them to death. Like they're literally my family. Like I go on vacations. I've went on a vacation with two of them. Like, like we become like a, a family. Like they're my, yeah. some of my best friends to this day. So, um, you know, I think like having such long-term clients that I've had, I've been seeing for about a year now, or, cause I've only started this journey like about a year and a half ago. Oh, shit. Um, I just started training a year ago and then like my journey was two years. So it's kind of choppy, but I barely started at the gym like six months ago. So it was, it's kind of a lot, but yeah, it's like, what? Okay. Yeah. So what'd so you I do just, before this? So before a little technical difficulty, <laughs> we were talking about uh, your training. So you went on, you've been on trips with your, with your, with your team, yes, basically. Yes, my clients, my team, yes. So what, what is a goal or how do you manage a business now? Like mm -hmm. it's your, you're basically yeah. your own entrepreneur. Yeah. How do you manage that? How, how do you set new goals? How do you achieve them? Like. Let's I talk think about that. that's kind of where I'm, I'm at right now. Like I was dealing with a lot of things. Like I had, like I just told you, started about a year ago, this whole journey of just being my own boss. And yeah. I'm still learning as I'm growing. I, I had to deal with a lot of things personally before I could really tap into YouTube and go into that route. Cause that is another beast in itself. Yeah. Um, and I just started on TikTok, and you know, just the whole social media platforms. I feel like you just have to show up, um, vulnerably a little bit. Yeah. And I was struggling with that. So I think finally, um, this new year I'm ready to like be a little bit more vulnerable, be show people my, my true self, show up authentically a little bit more on social media. So what is, what is that? Like, how does that, what, how do you look at that? Like, what so do you... it's just maybe talking more on my stories mm, or just like sharing more about what I love. Like I just started sharing more about like my leggings and like, you know, just little things that don't <laughs> seem like a lot to some people. But it, is. Is, it takes a lot for me to do because I'm like, oh, my gosh, constantly judging. Like, are yeah. they going to like this? Like, you know, but then when I realize, OK, like if they don't, then they're not going to vibe with it. And if they are, then they then they're going to fuck with it. And so yeah. I just have to constantly remind myself like, hey, you know what? It's not the end of the world. If somebody doesn't like you, you know, you'll be OK. You you know, so right. I think that's just with my inner child. She like screams sometimes. And so I have to like calm her down. I'm like, hey, look, chill, girl. Like, it's going to be OK. Um, so I, I've been b like battling with that for a while, but I think I'm finally ready. I've like taken care of her. So I think yeah. like we're ready to show up a little bit more. I think the we're not in this world to be liked. Yeah. Because if we're, we're in this world to be liked by everybody, then Jesus, yeah. we're it goes back to like how we said a little earlier, like trying to fit in like. I remember from even through high school, honestly, being very honest with myself now, high school all the way to like 21, mm -hmm. I was just trying to fit in. Yeah, for sure. I, I was trying to look good. I was trying to f get the newest car, do this, yes. go this, that. And I'm like, Jesus, I'm spending too much money that I don't got. 100%. That's how I'm I felt about my Yeezy <laughs> collection that I had for no fucking reason. Like, I'm like, why am I buying $400 shoes? Yeah. I actually just sold all of them. Like, I was like, I, I this isn't even me. I, I've, I'm wearing Vans. Like, yeah. you know, like, I'm not even this person. And so once I did the same thing, like, I was like, I'm, this isn't me. Yeah, you know? like, I, I, I put it out there. I shop at Target. My latest fits are from hey, Target. Hey, this shirt's from that, Target. <laughs> there we go, you know? Yeah. But that's that's just it. Like, so many people are just trying to fit in. Yeah, especially trying... with social media right now, right? Like, they're just like, okay, what's on trend? Like, what do I need to do to get the next views and stuff like that? Yeah. And I feel like... The moment that I stopped thinking those things is when people were like, oh, this person's super real. She's like really organic or, you know, she's been through the struggles. Like you showed the before and after of like that vulnerability of when you were bigger and you don't want anybody to see that. But yeah. it's real and like it's the truth. And so I feel like for me, that's like how I'm trying to move and how I'm trying to like, you know, attract more people. So with uh, your business and all your training and social media. Mm -hmm. For I think for for guys, I mean it's whatever you post a picture without your shirt, your muscle, blah blah blah. <laughs> it, is, it is like yeah, you know that bothers are in, homies. Don't worry about it. Um, but like for they for, are they are though for for girls like 
for you, it is a tough scenario because you post your gains, what mm-hmm. you work so hard to achieve. Yeah. And as soon as you post it, you get the dogs out. <laughs> you get the like people. Yeah. You get them that they think you're basically that easy. Right. Right. Like you post. Yes. I mean, you work so hard to get your gains. Yes. And they just come in and they want it. All right, like we don't. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like I think for me, like just because I post a picture in a bikini or you know you show yeah. off the booty gains, like that does not devalue me as a human being. Like trust me, if you meet me, you're gonna be like, oh shit, she's about she's about that action. Like she's serious, she's about her business. Sucking like, the throat if she needs. Yeah, to. <laughs> exactly. Like you know, I feel like I think this is what society has ingrained in our brains. Like oh, because she's showing off her cheeks, like she must be like super easy or like, you know, she doesn't have standards or it's easy to get. Like I could tell you, I haven't, I don't really talk to anybody on Instagram like that. Like Mm. I'm not, I don't date anybody on Instagram, especially if they're coming at me sideways. What's like like the weirdest, like uh, pickup line that you've gotten on your social media? Oh my gosh. Well, honestly, I don't really read them all because they say in my like (laughs) request, but sometimes I'll like look through them just to see because sometimes they're like potential clients. So I have to like look and see like if there's any like, potential yeah. clients that are there um i don't think i've gotten anything super crazy um i've had people like ask me to marry them i think they're kidding but then one person was like oh and then the people will start fighting with themselves in my dms like so for example like oh let me take you out for bottle service or whatever and then i mm. won't respond and then they'll be like i'm i'm gonna tell you when we're married or whatever like this is how you did me or whatever and then like i can't believe you're not responding to me like they'll be talking to themselves and i'm just like sir like why are you beating yourself up in my dms like nobody's <laughs> even talking back to you like, no one's no one's uh, yeah like, I'm you're not even, conversating like, by yourself yeah so like that's probably the craziest one where i'm just like this fool is talking to himself like he i I, like you know and especially if you're coming at me all mad now that i'm not answering i'm like i'm sorry like i don't know what to say like you know i try to meet people organically anyway so i don't know i just don't really yeah so let's go let's do a little speed dating so what is uh we we kind of said it earlier and you kind of said it yeah on the first date who pays um, for me, I'm realizing that it has to be the man. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm, that's just the standard that I hold. Um, it's not for everybody. I know women exactly. who do the chivalry diet who will go halves on a date. Yeah. And I think that's beautiful. Um, however, I realized that that bothers me. And like, at first I was doing the chivalry dating, like for a while, like I was like not minding, but then I realized that's like, that really Too bugged much. me. It really, really bugged me. Cause like the standard was that like, I, I have for myself is really high and like I know yeah. what I bring to the table so I don't need to beg anybody to sit down and eat with me and yeah. that's like the mentality that I have so like when you're you know not paying for me or when like I don't know I just feel like you're not taking me very seriously because nice. like you know I'm like traditional in the sense like I want you to open the door like I want you to like <laughs> pay for my meal like yeah. you know and like I'll do like little things to like do be traditional too you know yeah um so yeah that that's like a big one for me i know people have their like differences with like well and i think it depends like so if we're going on a date you're asking on a date and you're making it very clear that it's a date then i'm expecting to pay get your pockets right bro (laughs) but if it's like (laughs) we're going out and like hey like it's a friend thing yeah. And of course, like I'm paying for my own stuff, like half you know, and half. Half there and we half. go, a hundred percent. But like, if you're making it very clear to me that there's it like a more of an intentional yeah. thing, then I'm gonna expect some more intentional like actions, you All know. Right. So next one, what a date ideal? Gym, movies, or dinner? Um, I'm more of a like adventure. So Ooh. like, I'll go like to ice skating, or like I'll do like a comedy show, or like burlesque, like like dinner okay, like okay. i'm like more of an adventurous person so like i feel like winning me over would be like something that i've never done you know yeah. like one of my coworkers, like when i was bartending at the time this guy like took her on a helicopter ride like over and i was like damn you cannot beat that now i'm not expecting that at all <laughs> so if you're gonna drop you better have a helicopter appointment ready to go bro <laughs> no 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 but i i'm just saying like <laughs> i mean i i'm cool with like dinner at the park too like yeah. you know just things that I've, I wouldn't think of myself because um, yeah, yeah. I try to get creative too like one of my friends um, she's dating this guy and they do um, dating but like so she'll plan a date and he won't know about it and then he'll do another date 
So they went on like a burlesque dinner date. He planned it, paid for it, did all that stuff. And she's doing, I think, like a paint and sip. So like, so they'll like, you know, take turns like planning something. And I love that because I was like, that's exactly what it is. Like I'll pay for a date that I plan and then you pay for the date that you plan. You know, I feel like that's so fair. It is. It is. Yeah. Especially in the beginning. Because I feel like it's unsaid. There's unsaid like (laughs) lines. All right. Uh, Fit six pack muscles or a dad bod? I actually like a dad bod. If you could, I, I don't like like gym guys because they're really egotistical, and I'm like, I I feel like they come off extremely douchey. Oh, yeah. Oh. Like in my personal, like from the experiences Experience. that I've had, yeah. like they're just like, oh, don't you want me? Because I got a six pack, and then like they come <laughs> off like that, like to other women, and then you know, I just yeah. feel like they got a big head, and so I just I love like somebody who has a little bit of chubs, like who <laughs> likes to eat because I like to eat too, yeah. but like doesn't take it like super seriously, but also like maintains a healthy lifestyle because that's important um i was actually just having a conversation with my friends about dating like tens and dating like below tens so like sevens and eights or sixes so they're ugly no they're not (laughs) ugly (laughs) all right so let's looks or or, uh humor i would say like i'm so i'm sapiosexual so it's somebody who i like get stimulated off of conversation by like that's what i'm attracted to so i personally like that's the first time yeah. someone has even said that or brought it up. <laughs> yeah, I feel like because for me, like, you can be funny and you can be good looking. But, like, if you're not stimulating my mind, then I'm not going to be attracted to that. Like, because if I can't hold, like, intelligent conversations or talk about the universe or ramble on about, you yeah. know, the Matrix, then, you know, it's like <laughs> I'm probably not going to have a fun time, you yeah. know. And I feel like for me, it's like as much as I'm into fitness and I love that part of me, like yeah. it's not all that I offer. Like I have depth and like, if you're unable to meet those depths, then it's probably just not going to work out. Just keep moving on. Yeah. Just keep it pushing, you know, and it's nothing personal. It's just like, we just, you know, we were meant to meet, but not meant to last. Ocean views or city views? Ooh, ocean views. I'm a big beach person. I love the beach. My goal is to move to San Diego. So yeah, I'm, a, I'm I want to like learn to surf and like, I want to actually like, if not San Diego, Hawaii, like I'm, yeah, that's the dream. <laughs> we got to get going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. So what, um, let's see, what phrase have you lived by in the last year, couple months that it has really helped you and you think it could help somebody else Damn. if they listen to this? Dang. Oh, man. I don't know. I think self-care isn't selfish. It's important. I think for me, that was something that I, because I had been like giving to other people for such a long time, like to my partner, to my daughter, to other things. And then when I really sat down and I was like, you know what, it's not selfish. It's just something that I have to get done. And if I'm not happy, like we talked about, then like no one else is going to be happy. And I feel like for me, once I started living with that, like every day I was like, because sometimes I'll feel bad. Like sometimes I'll go out and I will have my daughter and my mom will watch her that day, whether it be like uh, something for work or just something that I want to do with my friends. You know, Um, I have to remind myself, look at like I haven't been out in forever. Like, you know, like just rationalizing like, okay, like you haven't done anything for yourself in like a couple months. Like it's okay to like take a couple hours for yourself like, so what's like a self-care day for you oh man getting up so like you know a regular sunday getting up early going to the gym um getting food that makes me feel good you what know? is that what kind oh my god avocado toast would have to be one a protein <laughs> smoothie um all right unhealthy well, oh, okay. let's, let's hit with the unhealthy <laughs> side um i feel like pizza is always a winner i can't mm. or an impossible burger or oh. yeah i don't know pineapple on pizza yes yeah, I'm I'm a big pineapple person. Yeah. <laughs> no? We might get canceled with this culture. Oh my you know? gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they said pineapple doesn't belong on pizza. I don't I had to disagree with that. It's like a little bit of sweet. I don't know. I don't know. Oh uh, I like it. It's cool. So with with the uh, everything you got going on, you're twenty five years old. Yes. Views on marriage. Yeah. I think that is important in our age groups. So I'm not old. I'm 26. Okay. You know, just yeah, little, hey. the baby. We got 22. Cindy, <laughs> Aubrey. We got another baby over there. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Marriage. Mm-hmm. And I was telling Dylan on the way here that um, I, I searched it up the other day. It said that the baby boomers have the highest rate of divorce. Mm-hmm. And I was like, and already before that, I was like, yeah, I, I know in our age group, we tend to want to get married at 18 to 21 because we yeah. love them forever. Right. And our 
Hey. Two years later, boom, divorce. A hundred percent. So how do how how do you view that from your what you experienced to now with your kid now? Yes. What it, what is the view on on marriage? I would like to be married one day. I think that um, it's a beautiful thing to be in a union with somebody and yeah. be committed and you know and value each other and show up for each other every single day. I think that's a beautiful thing, and I definitely want that in the future. Yeah. Um, however, like I'm still like learning. Um, about me and relationships and just kind of diving into my more intimate side with people, you know? And so for me, like at this very moment, like marriage isn't something that I look for, but I think it's important. I think it's beautiful when you're able to like commit to somebody and share that life with them and like experience like their evolution and your evolution and moving in fluidity with each other. I feel like it's such a beautiful thing and I'm all about it. I think you just have to also be ready for that. Like, I don't want to date anybody, which I've learned in the past and through other relationships is like people who um, can't take care of themselves. You know, like I'm not going to be with somebody who doesn't show up for themselves either. Like, you know, I want somebody who's going to like take the time to like do self care days for themselves or hang out with the boys or do whatever they need to do in order to be happy because I'm not going to be able to give them that. Like I can only do certain things, but I'm not going to be able to like take care of somebody in ways that you're good with that with boys hanging out with their boys. I know. Isn't that crazy? crazy. I am. It's crazy because I I feel like if you see the thing is, is like when you, when you don't trust your man, like that's a big thing. Like that's on you. Like, and if you're okay with like carrying on with that burden, like then, then that's the burden that you carry. But like, if you're not okay with certain things, then you need to communicate that as an adult and like have conversations and be open and upfront. And if there's something that you don't like, like, talk about it. You know, I think a lot of people are just, like, passive aggressive or, like, yeah. they'll be emotionally avoidant with their partner. What about, uh, like, your partner hanging out with, with having girlfriends and yeah. vice versa, you having guy friends? Yes. Like, is that something that we should kind of normalize and be okay with? Or is Absolutely. that just depends on e- on each one? I totally think that we shouldn't be so territorial with each other. I yeah. feel like when you do that, you suffocate each other and you like suffocate each other in what you think is love. Yeah. But love is freedom. You know, the mm. moment that you're free with somebody like, and I can be so open and honest with them, yeah. that's when for me, like I'm going to be the happiest. Cause I am, I'm, I'm always talking to other people talking to like, I'm just a very like socializing. socializer. You're socializing. Like, yeah. So for me, I don't want anybody like you can't talk to this person or you can't do this or block you know. that person. Yeah, like for me, it's <laughs> like them. exactly. It's like for me, what's the reason? Like, like did you hook up with them before? Like, you know, we'll talk about it. Like, let's have a conversation and like let's see why I'm so upset about it or why you're so bothered by me hanging out with this person. Let's have that uncomfortable conversation, yeah, make it comfortable. Exactly, and I feel like a lot of people just don't have that. Like, they don't yeah. have that openness in their relationship or freedom in their relationship to have those discussions. Yeah. And for me, that's something that I've learned to like be comfortable with is like you know what this is really bothering me like can we talk about that for a second and if they're unable to have that conversation then that person just isn't for me you know like Ooh. i just think like you need to be open and honest and live truthfully and if you're lying to me or going to the restroom uh-huh i know like some people like going to the restroom answering phone calls or like texting people <laughs> on snapchat like i know it all like yeah. you know you can't fool me like so if you try to be sneaky like i'm gonna know <laughs> smart but it because it's so true like how many times have you gone to the restroom you know or i don't know not you but like your boys or whatever (laughs) no and and i i literally because i i i coach uh, some young girls and i tell them from just experience i'm like look bro a guy is never gonna admit it but guys have done everything yep but the same way we've done things, girls do it too. A hundred percent. So I, I think uh, even with Cindy, we had that conversation where, uh, and I heard someone said it. It said, guys do who they can and girls do who they want. Yes. And then vice versa. Guys marry who they want. Yes. Girls marry I've who they just, can. Somebody just told me that. Yeah. Yeah. That, I think that's true. I, I think it's true, but I feel like. You know, we all have the power of choice, you know? And so if you decide to be with somebody who cheats on you and who yeah. steps out and in your relationship there. and stay there, then ride with him, right? At the end of the day, like, that's your dude, then ride with that. Like, yeah. and you be okay with it. Like, but really be okay with it. And yeah. don't get upset when he brings other girls in, into your, it, like, it's world. It's a, what's that relationship called? There's a name Polygamy? For yes. Yeah. I was yeah. watching a podcast on that yeah. the other day, and he literally had, it's a big fitness dude, and he literally oh, had his two yeah. ladies in there. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if you're okay with that and that's the relationship you guys want to like tap into, then yeah. by all means, who am I to say anything about it? Yeah. You know, 
So I, I don't know. Like, yeah. No, I mean, I, I literally, I, I give out those hidden secrets to like <laughs> my, my young ones. Cause it's yeah. like, look, dude, a guy is always going to tell you, Hey, I'm not going to do it again. I'm going to yes. change. There's that just, it and, and it turns into, um, just what brainwashing them. Yes. And then it turns into a very toxic relationship mm-hmm. and it turns in, into putting them into a sort of depression Absolutely. to like, they got to serve you as a, as a, we think we're here and it's like, nah, bro, like we all got to yeah. be. And I think like, because you, you know, you tell her like, or not her, but even vice versa, it could be a female doing that yeah. to a man. Like if you constantly say you're crazy, right. You're gaslighting them. You know, you're like, Oh no, like it's nothing. Like you're, you're, you're just out of pocket all the time. Like you don't let me do this. Right. Yeah. But it's like, are you checking your actions? And on top of that, like women just are, could be at insecure at that point. They could just be like, you know what? Like maybe I deserve this or like, man, no one's going to love me like the way he does or like, you know, that, or certain yep. things, you know what I mean? Or like, cause yep. I've been there. Like I know how that is like who's gonna love me with a kid like who's gonna take care of like you know and then I like keep thinking about those things like especially like after failed relationships failed dates right craziness yeah. happens and you're just like who's gonna love me like this you yeah. know but I think when you're like yo like you know what actually I'm pretty cool and then you're like you reverse that psychology of yourself in those thoughts and you're just like actually you know what I'm pretty cool someone is gonna love me like no matter you know if I have stretch marks on my legs or whatever like people are still gonna love yeah, you for you and like I, I think you just have to be I, open to that I think with with all of that happening it's we're we're looking into the acceptance of everybody, like we said. Right. It We're all like, stems back from Yeah, that. like, oh, I have a kid and no one's ever... It's like, nah, bro. Like, someone will be yes. for you. Yes, yes, yes. But it's just the more you go out there and you're blaming this situation and blaming that and this and that. Yeah. It's like, bro, like, the more you're yourself are not ready for one. Yeah. No, for sure. Like 100%. I, a lot of us think like we're ready for the world and it's like what have we really done to get ready yes we haven't changed who we are we haven't we haven't yeah. worked on ourselves and we just want to jump into it yeah. don't get me wrong i know some people jump into another relationship and it works yeah 100 it works yeah and it's just mm, it's yeah and I think it's hard for, for women to, to, to tap in on that. It's just like, you know, when your ex-boyfriend who's cheated on you finds another girl, right? And you're just like, damn, like, you know, she's not me or whatever. But I'm like, no, girl, like, yeah. she's not putting... You're not... She's putting up with the shit you weren't putting up with. Yeah. You know, like, she's, like, doing the things that you didn't want to deal with anymore. Yeah. Like, and she's putting up with that. And it's not to knock her down or it's not to say that she's not... a beautiful person like it's not any of those things it's that you were ready to move on you were ready to be better for yourself and yeah. you weren't going to put up with that anymore and she is yeah and that's literally the only difference is that like she's down to do those things and you're not and it was more of like because of your peace right keeping the peace like keeping you know peace. you were ready to like move on and like yeah. you want something more for yourself and she's okay with that it's like they say like the power above removes people that you don't need from your life especially when you didn't see it yourself yeah like you can blame yourself all day long but yes. he saw something that you did it mm-hmm. and he did it for you yes. and it's like hey yeah analyze it visualize it move on from it take notes from it move on from Absolutely. it work on you yes so with that being said what to a younger self yes. technically i mean you have a daughter so kind of speaking to her too yeah what advice would you give her for life damn i think that's a loaded question but i love it um i think just I think just coming into terms with like understanding who you are first, like yeah. for the longest time I was searching for me and I'm still on the, the journey of Definitely. that. And I think we all are as Correct. we get older, but I think once you discover yourself at a young age, you're, you're better off like coming off as like that person, like later on. So like what I mean by that is like, if you're insecure in the, for the longest time and you don't know who you are, then you're not going to know what career you want or what, you know, your, your drive is in life or your passion. And I think if I would have just known that earlier on, like, what do I love to do? Like, you know, what, what is truly my passion? Like what, then really sitting with that and not yeah. going to parties, drinking and doing all this other stuff. Like if I really sat with those things, like I might've been in a higher place at my time right now. But, yeah. you know, I think like for her, I just want her to like get to know her better. And like, what is the things that she loves? Like, to do like what is like her passion in life like I want to help her see that early on so that way she's able to get to that career or get to that dream or get to that goal in a faster pace um and learn a lot more lessons along the way um because for me like I I don't know I'm an Aries so I'm very like impulsive you know I like to get things done right away and so I just want her to like get her fulfillment in life a lot faster than I did and so if I can just show her like 
you know, that that is super important. Like, yeah. I feel like she'll live a better and more authentic life herself. God. <laughs> hey, I think this was just amazing, bro. Yeah. I appreciate you. you. I mean, you dropped gems left and right. Thank so you. You said, yeah, you started YouTube also? No. So I, I will be in the ne- upcoming year, this new year. This is one of my goals is on my, you know, vision board. So. Yeah. Yes, I'm definitely going to be tapping into that soon, but I do have an Instagram and a TikTok and all that mumbo jumbo on We're gonna social put media. It, the link on down below. Yeah. You better hit that follow <laughs> if you haven't yet. Subscribe, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, yes. all that good stuff. Dude, stay tuned for the messages because they are coming and coming fast. Yes. I appreciate Thank you. you so much. There it is. Thank Woo. you.